practice. That's right. My division kind of deeper in the bureaucracy. So I'm in the Department of Housing and Economic Development in the Bureau of Planning and Zoning, and that's where my division is in sustainability and open space. Um, so, you know, I've, I've only been in the bureaucracy for, let me see, since 99, which is kind of a long time. Um, so I'm going to talk about my experiences working on uh, what we're doing in planning and my experience is working with both the Department of Public Health and CLOC, the Consortium to Lower Obesity in Chicago Children, which is also made up of a lot of doctors. This is a slide from our Public Health Department, which is talking about, you know, they say these things, it's not about individual behavior, it's about behave, how we behave as a city. Can I get the clicker here? Okay. So I had seen, we started, because of the CDC, um, we deep in my place, we got some funding, which actually went to the other agencies, which is great, to do a food plan. So CLOCK and DPH said, you guys should do a food plan, you should have adopted this policy. I, okay, fine. So we started doing a food plan. I had seen the slides of the states and the obesity crisis rising, and the thing on the left, you know, you see like it's a non-communicable disease that looks like a disease of place. Okay, I'm not really sure what that means. And a year and a half after talking, we had a lot of public meetings with people, meeting every Friday, Food Fridays. Uh, we start to put our recommendations together, and we're starting out with like the individual behavior recommendations. Those should be the first ones. And my colleagues that are in public health are kind of like, you know, they're not liking this, but it's not clear why we shouldn't start with those because for the rest of us that makes perfect sense. So they, somebody from public health gives me this four-page paper and it's got this, this uh, chart in here, this pyramid, and finally I figure out what their problem is. <laughs> is that it's really about changing the context. Now, I understand changing the context. I mean, planning is about the context. Land use is about the context. So oh, you're telling me that individual behavior, although it's critical, you got to do it, it really doesn't have as much impact as changing the context. Okay. So to me, that's like, what is the story? What are we trying to do? Now, I had been working, like I said, since 99, implementing a city space plan, which was really a way of putting context around Mayor Daly's uh, love of trees and like of open space. So we created this plan, we had measurements, we were competing with other cities. T 13 years later, we've acquired 1,500 acres of new land in the city for open space. That's a 10% increase of parkland in Chicago in that period of time, which if you buy land in cities, that's kind of hard to do. So we've done that, and, and we had a client, too. When you're doing open space, you know, the client is a park district, so it's pretty easy. I can buy it, and then it goes to the park district. There's someone who's going to take it and manage it and deal with it. So we started this plan, the, a recipe for healthy places, and I kind of like the recipe part, because it's like, how do we make healthy places? But what we're trying to do is, how do you even think about addressing the intersection of food and obesity on the land? I don't know. We really, I, I was, you know, I just don't, this is what we came up with. Um, so we have these six strategies, and you can see improving eating habits is number six. Build healthier neighborhoods turned out to be number one, because that was the largest contextual thing. Um, and it may seem obvious, but it was not. Um, so I'm going to talk about these three quickly, because these are really the land use kind of planning, economic development strategies, and the other four are more in the uh, realm of service providers or programmatic people, and I, we do not do programs. Planning, you should not have a planning emergency, and that's why I want to work in planning. Um, so um, develop one, so build healthier neighborhoods. So have some data on obesity-related health disparities. We didn't have any data. Uh, we had no way to measure things. This map is Chicago, 77 community areas have been measured by various indicators for like since the 30s or 20s. So we pretty much can track our neighborhoods by these community areas. So I'll show you how we got the data, but this map shows you the communities with the highest risk for obesity-related health disparities uh, in green. And yeah, it turns out they are the major, uh, minority communities, African-American and Hispanic primarily. Um, so, you know, measure that, know that, okay, that's new information, and now let's plan, let's do some land use planning in those communities that kind of addresses the situation. Uh, quickly on the data, we started mining our own license data. When Mayor Emanuel came in, he was very focused on, on a lot of things. Guys got a lot of things. 
But um, urban agriculture ordinance, which we've been working on and wanted that done, that got done, and food access. And so we started getting more cooperation on getting our licensing data. So the first one at grocery stores is actually using our own data. Yeah, we have a lot of data, but unless you have people who know how to use it, it doesn't do you any good. Um, and the red areas show you low access to grocery stores. Um, we got food insecurity rates from the National Feeding America, and for the first time, Department of Public Health and the Planning Department got uh, we're sharing data, and that's how we got to the green map, right? So we used diabetes rates, which public health had for us. Merge those three things together, and we got that green map. Uh, so here's the, wait, I went backwards. No, no, that was right. So this is the green map. So now what we want to do is start planning by those neighborhoods. Coincidentally, CDC, I guess it had something to do with the federal administration changes. So CDC started giving many money for planning, and we heard earlier, planning money, a little money goes a long way when you're doing planning. Um, and then we got, uh, our regional planning association got money from this HUD sustainable uh, communities thing, US EPA, uh, HUD, <laughs> and then DOT. We applied for money. We didn't get it because CMAP got it. They asked us what we wanted to do. We wanted to do the community we were going to do, what we applied for. So we had come up with this idea of doing a green, healthy neighborhood land use strategy. And the name, really, we just made it up. Didn't have any deep thought into it. Because there's a lot of land there. We wanted, to be, we wanted the land to be green and healthy. A lot of vacant land in the city. Vacant land in the city doesn't look green and healthy. There's a lot of land, but you, know, you can have low density and have healthy. And right now, that is not the case. Um, so we're just finishing this plan. Uh, this community is 90% African American, has consistently lost population since the 40s, down to half its size. Uh, where our next planning area is going to be these two community areas, 90% Hispanic, doesn't have much vacant land. So they're very different communities, and the strategies we come up with will be diff uh, in different and interesting, and we haven't done this before. Um, so that was the first thing out of this plan, this big plan about food and obesity. Focus on communities that have disparity. The second one, which has a land use implication, was to grow food. Now, I showed you before, we did city space before, recreational space. There's all kinds of open spaces, public open spaces in the city for ball fields, <coughs> excuse me, and all kinds of recreational things. What we said here was, um, it is a public open space type of use to have a system of landscapes where you grow food. Um, yeah, those landscapes, just because you can only grow food doesn't mean uh, that it's not a public open space. Um, you can only play ball on a ball field. You can't do other things with that, so why not have a system? And we have had seen a lot of people trying to do projects in urban ag, but we, were trying to make it, we are trying to make it into like a system that has uh, some longevity to it. So we have been investing in urban agriculture projects, and you can see in the areas we're doing it are in the green areas, conveniently enough for us. Um, so we started doing that, and that, I have to say, a lot of, again, a lot of talk about urban ag. The action is much less, it's new, let's just say it's new. Um, so we wanted to, we're creating this system, and what we are learning is that in a system in a neighborhood, you really need to have a foundational or an organization that's there that you can build around. So this is an organization called Growing Home. The two sites in green, they've gotten from the city for a dollar. One they own, one's in a land trust that we created out of the open space plan back in the 90s. And they, and the reason it's public and that the land trust can hold it is that they are providing a kind of use for the neighborhood. They're growing food, some of it gets sold in the neighborhood, but it's also creating a space in the neighborhood. And in this neighborhood, we really don't need more parks. When you look at parks, um, park numbers and per capita, the population doesn't really need it from a recreational perspective. So what other kind of uses can we put on this land that are productive and that can uh, create some other kind of value besides recreation? So we have these hubs. And that, then something grows from that. So our third um, kind of land use thing is expand healthy food enterprises. And enterprises is really now talking about kind of like, you know, making some money. Um, so we have these two, expansion of businesses that produce and process food, and then expand the number and variety of retail options. So um, one of the things, like I said, is that the mayor wanted to change the zoning. We did have to change the zoning. 
in order to allow like the expansion of food production because urban agriculture was not defined in the zoning ordinance. So when that comes in, the guys who are looking at things, they have no way to like, I don't know, I don't know how to permit this. I mean, there are no rules. So we created the rules, we defined urban farm, we defined aquaponics, we defined hydroponics, and everything in the green is where it can occur as of right, which means if you come in, it's a fairly easy zoning thing because the guys can now click off the boxes. Very important, click in the boxes. Um, so now we've got some mechanisms, and I'm just gonna get a little glass of water here. So now if you kind of started putting things together, you can see up there again, we've got the growing home farm with the two green spaces. They're the nonprofit hub, they're educational, they job train, they employ the hard to employ, and now we got more vacant land. Um, this thing on the bottom is an elevated railroad. I would say 80% of what you see in green nicely rendered is really city vacant land. Uh, that's the way we want it to go. So we now have a hub of a nonprofit there. Now we want to move into something a little more complex, which is transferring some of that land not to a nonprofit, but to some people in the community who are learning from that center and then can grow food, private enterprise, and you're not gonna ever get rich doing urban ag, but you can make supplemental income. So right now, growing home, since they're the hub there, we've met with them, they've got two potential buyers. One is a teacher, she's, she's a white woman. The other is an African-American young guy in the program, been working with them for four years. He wants to grow sort of okra and collard greens and she wants to do an orchard. So we want to transfer that property to them for a dollar, but we are looking at cleaning it up. We're very concerned and have a whole bunch of rules about, you know, you can't be growing food in environmentally impacted land. But that's where we're moving to, so that you have a hub, which is sort of a nonprofit, and then these other sort of enterprises, um, the, all experimental, but we have a lot of land, and the land needs to create some other value in the community, and it needs to start being owned by the community. Um, we have another, um, that's the one we're facilitating, here's one, because we've changed the ordinance and because that's the kind of thing going on, we have another applicant on the west side who's gonna do this, uh, who wants to do the same thing. And then finally, expand the number and variety of food retail options. Um, the mayor has really worked hard. Uh, he's very interested in grocery stores. The food access issue spoke to him. Um, so he's been working on food access. We've been doing more grocery stores here in the neighborhood, the same one uh, that we're finishing where the urban ag is. He has been working with Whole Foods to come in and do a different kind of store. And what you're really seeing here is expansion of variety of stores. So the other blue square is an existing Aldi, but this would be um, another retail environment. And this area of the city needs retail. That land has been vacant for 15, 20 years. Um, so this, again, is another way of building around the energy of food, um, as opposed to Mayor Daly was very into open space, Mayor Manuel, very into food, and our job is to sort of continue to build that context. So um, with that, I will...